Welcome to Allergy and Asthma Network's Patient Learning Pathways. Today you've chosen to listen to our Asthma 101 module. We'll share some important information to help you understand asthma better. Asthma is a long-term lung disease that causes episodes of coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath. Like all chronic illnesses, asthma cannot be cured, but in most cases it is very manageable. Most people with asthma experience one or more of the following symptoms. Coughing from asthma is often worse at night or early morning. It can be dry or mucus filled. Wheezing is a whistling or squeaky sound, especially when you breathe out. Sometimes wheezing is easily heard. Other times you need a stethoscope. Your t- chest can feel very tight. This can feel like something like s- something is squeezing or sitting on your chest. You may feel breathless like you can't catch your breath or breathe deeply enough. You may feel as though you're out of shape or constantly tired. It's important to understand that asthma is a syndrome and not just a single disease. There's a saying that when you've seen one case of asthma, you've seen one case of asthma. When someone who has asthma comes in contact with their environmental or genetic triggers, it can cause inflammation or swelling in their airways. The airways become reactive They become swollen and filled with mucus, mucus, and it feels like it's very hard to breathe. People with asthma can experience coughing, wheezing, and more. Asthma is a two-step process. Airway inflammation, which we call quiet asthma, and bronchospasm, which is the noisy part of asthma. When we talk about quiet asthma, that's when your lungs become easily inflamed and swollen. Since you can't feel or see what's going on, that's why we call this the quiet part of asthma. If this is not treated, each time your airways are exposed to your asthma triggers, the inflammation increases and your symptoms are likely to get worse. As for noisy asthma, this is when your airways are so inflamed they're very sensitive. Exposure to the slightest irritation or allergen triggers, what's called bronchospasm, which is the twitching and sudden constriction of your airways, creating the coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath that you can hear. What causes asthma? Anyone of any age, family background, race, gender, or general health can develop asthma. Researchers think many genetic and environmental factors play a role, especially during the first years of life when the immune system is developing. Some of the reasons that people develop asthma include a family history of asthma or allergies, mother's smoking or exposure to secondhand smoke or air pollution during pregnancy, early childhood exposure to secondhand smoke, air pollution, or indoor allergens such as dust mites, cockroaches, or mold, damage to developing lungs due to premature birth or early childhood respiratory illness, and for adults, exposure to chemical irritants or industrial dusts in the workplace. What triggers asthma symptoms? Well, asthma is not a one-size-fits-all disease. What sets off symptoms for you or someone in your family may be quite different from what affects others. Common asthma triggers, and there are quite a few of these, include indoor allergens. These are mold, pet dander, dust mites, and cockroaches. Outdoor allergens, including pollen and mold. Irritants, such as secondhand smoke, diesel exhaust, and air pollution. Respiratory viruses, such as the common cold, flu, and sinus infections. Exercise. Cold air or sudden changes in temperature. Strong smells strong emotions such as laughing or crying, hormonal changes, and stress. Is asthma serious? All asthma is serious. There's no way of telling whether an asthma flare will last seconds, minutes, or hours, or if it will turn life-threatening. No matter what your past diagnosis, how infrequent your symptoms are, or how good you're feeling right now, your asthma can change without warning. It's important to know what causes your symptoms, what your medications do, and how to respond to breathing emergencies. Many people ask, will I outgrow asthma? Asthma is a lifelong disease that cannot be outgrown. Your immune system changes throughout your life and your asthma symptoms will too. However, you will always have the potential to experience asthma symptoms. You must be aware that they can return at any time. With correct diagnosis, careful management, and appropriate use of medications, you can go years without any problems. However, if you let asthma get out of control, it can cause long-term lung damage. You may be asking yourself, how do I find out if someone that I love has asthma or if I have asthma? 
Every time someone wheezes, it's not necessarily asthma. Getting an accurate diagnosis begins with a conversation with your doctor. Like a skilled detective, the doctor combines information from your medical tests, physical exam, and verbal reports to determine whether asthma or some other cause is responsible for your symptoms. First, the doctor will ask you your health history. Some questions that may be discussed include, when did you first notice symptoms? How long do they last? What made them better or worse? Does anyone in your family, home, or workplace smoke? Do you or someone in your family have a history of aller asthma, allergies, eczema, food allergies, allergic rhinitis, seasonal bronchitis or colds that linger for months instead of days? Do you have breathing problems when exercising or sleeping through the night? What is your home, school, and work environment like? Do you have pets, carpet or wood floors, or water damage in your basement? Now the doctor will do a physical exam, looking for signs of conditions that often go along with asthma. That might include rhinitis, which is inflammation of the nose, sinusitis, which is inflammation of the sinuses, nasal polyps, which are mucus-filled bulbous sacs in the nose, eczema, or atopic dermatitis, which is a skin irritation. The physician will look inside your nose, watch the way your chest and stomach muscles move when you breathe, and use the stethoscope to listen to air flowing in and out of your lungs. If signs point to asthma, the doctor may use a spirometer to check how well your lungs are working. You'll be asked to take a deep breath in and then breathe out as hard as you can into the machine. The spirometer shows the amount of air you're able to breathe in and out and how fast you did it over a certain time period. If your airways are inflamed and narrow, or if the muscles around your airways tighten up, the results will show it. You may do this test several times, perhaps before and after using a quick relief bronchodilator inhaler to relax the airways. Test results that improve after using the medicine are strong indications of asthma. If you're not having any symptoms on the day of your exam, the results of your lung function testing may be normal. In this case, your doctor may order another test called a methacholine challenge. This medication causes a brief tightening of the airways that's more intense in people who have asthma. Other tests might include allergy testing, a test to see how your airways react to exercise, and tests for other conditions such as gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD or obstructive sleep apnea. The doctor may order a test for sinus disease, a chest x-ray, or an electrocardiogram to find out if a foreign object or lung or heart disease could cause your symptoms. And there's also a test called the pheno test. This is a fractional exhaled nitric oxide test and is used to measure lung inflammation. If you see an asthma specialist, you may have additional tests to determine if you have allergic IgE or eosinophilic asthma. You may be wondering what to ask your doctor. Here are some things you may want to ask. What should I do when asthma symptoms start? The moment you first notice symptoms, use your prescribed quick relief bronchodilator, such as albuterol or levalbuterol. These medications relax the muscles that surround your airways, making it easier to breathe within a few short minutes. Some people mistakenly call these rescue inhalers, which give the impression they should only be used in an emergency. These medications should be used at first signs of symptoms or before exercise to prevent symptoms from getting out of control. What are the signs I need more help? Signs include symptoms that don't respond as indicated in your asthma action plan, feeling like you can't catch a good deep breath or can't get air out of your chest, you can't talk except in short phrases, you have a cough that just won't stop, and you simply feel too exhausted to breathe, your shoulders are tense and raised closer to your ears than normal, it's easier to breathe while sitting and leaning forward, your fingernails turn blue or your lips become bluish or gray in color. You could start sweating even though your skin feels clammy and cold. The skin around your chest, ribs, and collarbone sinks in with each breath, and you're using stomach muscles to help you breathe. Or if you're exp experiencing swelling of your throat, tongue, or limbs. How do I prevent symptoms from coming back? Once the obvious symptoms of an asthma flare are over, think about what happened in the moments, hours, or days leading up to the episode. Look for clues as to what may have triggered the symptoms. By keeping a diary on paper or in an app, you can track your symptoms and how well they align with your asthma action plan. Look to see patterns that can help you prevent symptoms. How do I avoid triggers? 
Well, when you figure out what sets off your symptoms, do your best to avoid your triggers. You may need to change your lifestyle, including avoiding exposure to cigarette smoke, keeping pets out of your bedroom, replacing dust mite proof and casings on your pillows and mattresses. Do what you need to do to avoid your specific trigger. Sometimes you simply can't avoid your triggers, like needing to go outside during pollen season. That's when you need to know your medications and follow your asthma action plan. How do I reduce my need for medication? Well, there are several steps you can take to reduce, reduce your needs for medications. Find things in your home, at work, or school that bring on your symptoms and try your best to avoid exposure whenever possible. Learn about your treatment options and how to use your medications correctly. Different medications treat the different parts of asthma, including the quiet and noisy parts of asthma. Ask what your medications do to, to your body and how often they should be used. Follow your asthma action plan even when you're not experiencing symptoms. Treat asthma symptoms at the very first hint that they're present. The longer asthma symptoms are allowed to continue, the more likely you'll need to take medications to get things back to normal. And in the end, just take really good care of yourself. Eat healthy, exercise, and get enough sleep. Everyone with asthma should ask his or her doctor for an asthma action plan. This is your own personal treatment plan. Your plan spells out how to treat your asthma every day, what to do when symptoms get worse, and how to handle situations like exercise or when you have a cold or virus. If you didn't get one from your doctor, ask for one. Your plan should outline what medications you should take, and you should know what each one is called, why you need it, and how much to take and when to take it. You should also know how to use your inhaler or nebulizer device, how soon to expect results, and what side effects might occur. The plan should outline what your asthma triggers are and how to reduce or eliminate exposure to them. Another function of the Asthma Action Plan is to help you monitor your asthma by tracking symptoms and how to recognize and handle worsening asthma. You need to know what signs to watch for, how to adjust medications in response to how you feel, and when to seek care from your doctor or the emergency room. Your asthma action plan will change as your asthma improves or worsens. Take a plan with you to each visit with your doctor and update it as needed. This is an example of an asthma action plan, but there are many plans that your doctor may complete for you. Most action plans have a green, yellow, and red section that address when you're doing well, when your asthma is getting worse, and when you need medical help. Again, be sure to ask your doctor for an asthma action plan. Key messages to remember from today's Asthma 101 learning include, asthma is not just one disease. It's a combination of symptoms. It's a syndrome, and symptoms are different for every person. Asthma has quiet symptoms and noisy ones. They represent different parts of how you experience asthma. If you think you have asthma, you should see your healthcare provider. You should take a list of questions that you want to ask with you. If you have asthma, you should always ask your doctor for an asthma action plan. Allergy and Asthma Network offers many resources to help you with issues or concerns with asthma. First, we have our Understanding Asthma Guide. This document is a comprehensive look at the basics of asthma, including an overview as well as treatment and management information. We have an online article on asthma symptoms and diagnosis to help you as you live with asthma or help someone you care about. We also have an asthma action plan. You can see the different parts of the plan and even print one out and take it with you next time you meet with your healthcare team. Look for our asthma resource sheet in the Patient Learning Pathways Asthma section. Follow the links to valuable information. Thank you for joining us today for Asthma 101. Allergy and Asthma Network is working every day to end the needless death and suffering due to asthma, allergies, and related conditions through outreach, education, advocacy, and research. Please join us for another Patient Learning Pathway presentation as we partner with you to breathe better together.